Hello and welcome to the webinar. We are excited to have you here as part of the PathLock Innovation Series. Our session right now is how to enhance your monitoring capabilities while hosting people soft in the cloud. Our presenter right now is Bram Smith from version one and he will be introducing himself in just a moment. My name is Stephanie Anderson. I'm the global webinar manager here at PathLock. That's great. Thank you for the introduction, Stephanie, and welcome everyone to the Pathlock Innovation Series. Whether this is your first session you've attended or the, or it's been running for a couple of days now, I think, and uh, it's, it's my great privilege to have been invited by, by the Pathlock team to come and talk to you today about uh, monitoring in PeopleSoft. The t official title is How to Enhance Your Monitoring Capabilities While Hosting PeopleSoft in the Cloud. Bit of a mouthful title, but essentially what we're talking about today is synthetic monitoring, um, specifically in OCI, but it doesn't have to apply to OCI. So it's not just about the cloud, but i um, going to explain what synthetic monitoring is and how you can utilize this to indeed enhance your monitoring capabilities uh, in PeopleSoft. Um, First, just to introduce myself, my name is Graham Smith. I head up the PeopleSoft technology team within version one. Um, I'm also, uh, my passion is as a developer and as a solution architect, I'm a, a certified Oracle um, OCI associate engineer, and I'm part of the ACE program within uh, Oracle, probably 25 plus, I lose track of time, 25 plus years working with Oracle technology and specifically PeopleSoft. And you'll have seen me uh, regularly presenting at uh, PeopleSoft events around the world. Um, love to be part of the uh, PeopleSoft and Oracle community. And that's why I'm part of the ACE program, actually. One of the things that the ACE community does is to contribute to events just like the PathLock Innovation Series with uh, non-salesy tech solution um, presentations. Um, the QR code there on the left is a, a link to my, my personal blog where I talk about PeopleSoft and Oracle Cloud uh, and other things like that. Um, I'm actually talking to you today from the United Kingdom uh, based in Oxford. Uh, that is pretty much actually what Oxford looks like at the moment, although that wasn't taken by me or even recently, uh, but we're in the middle of autumn or fall if you're from the US. Uh, and yes, indeed, the trees do look that color at the moment and it's horribly cold and wet and damp outside. <laughs> uh, but our Oxford is a beautiful city. And if you ever here, look me up um, and I'll happily go out and buy your coffee sometime. So as I said, I'm part of the ACE program and just need to include this slide just to talk about what the ACE program is about. It's about contributing to the community with valuable content and learning with the community about Oracle technology. Um, I'm a volunteer with the ACE program and um, I love to contribute. Why? Because I love to learn. And as much as I share what I know, I'm equally happy to receive and, and, and learn from others in, in the program. I work for version one. We're a, a global IT services company. We specialize in a, a, all the Oracle products, including PeopleSoft. I'm part of the PeopleSoft practice within version one. We do everything from upgrades to people tools, application maintenance, uh, managed services, and migrating PeopleSoft customers to cloud infrastructure, including OCI. So we have first question of the presentation is, who is this? And uh, if anybody wants to venture a guess in, in entering into the chat here, who you think uh, this person is, uh, I'll just give 20 seconds. I'll give you a clue, he's Russian. That may not be much of a clue. <laughs> okay, so we've got no takers. Let me tell you who this man is. This man actually saved the planet, arguably. Um, his name is Stanislav Petrov, and Stanislav Petrov um, is a lieutenant colonel in the uh, Russian military, the Soviet Air Defense Force. And in 1983, uh, specifically on the 26th of September 1983, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Stanislav Petrov was in charge of the OCO nuclear early warning uh, base, and his responsibilities were to monitor the bank of uh, dashboards of monitoring equipment looking for inbound missiles from the West uh, in order to give early warning to high command uh, that 
they were Russia was under attack from the West, and therefore high command would immediately respond with an all-out response and thus causing nuclear holocaust across the globe. Um, 26th of September 1983, just gone midnight, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Petrov noticed one single inbound missile from the West on his radar systems, and he didn't believe it. He doubted it. He didn't think it was real. Why not? Well, if, if America was going to attack with missiles, they wouldn't just send one. They'd send a whole ton of them because why just send one? And under the doctrine of mutual destruction, um, uh, Russia would respond not with one, but with all their might in order to destroy their threat in the West. So he didn't believe the monitoring systems. He, doubt, he doubted them and uh, therefore didn't call it into high command. He believed the systems were faulty. Uh, after, uh, I think, about 15 minutes, he noticed four other inbound missiles. And again, he doubted it. He thought if America are attacking, they're gonna attack with all their might, not just a handful of missiles. So he doubted his equipment. He doubted that the monitoring systems were reporting correctly the, the status of uh, what they were monitoring. Uh, there are rumors, although this is not verified, there are rumors he climbed to the top of the army base where he was based with a pair of very large binoculars looking to the horizon uh, because if he saw the missiles coming in, he'd still have time to phone it into high command and Russia would still have chance to return their missiles in attack. Actually, he didn't see such things and so uh, was vindicated. In fact, uh, he proved that the systems were indeed faulty. The monitoring systems were faulty. Um, he actually got court-martialed for disobeying military orders, but we're all very grateful he did because if he didn't, uh, if, if he had obeyed orders and reported this, Russia, uh, Russia would have sent a barrage of missiles to the West. The West would have retaliated thinking they were under threat from Russia and we can just kiss goodbye to the Northern Hemisphere. So we have a lot to thank Mr. Stanislav Petrov for. What has this got to do with PeopleSoft monitoring, you're asking? Well, you can read the full story of this in many uh, forms, but the one I enjoy most is this terrific book. If you haven't got it on your Christmas list for this year, I've no vested interest in this book other than it's a great book. But Professor Hannah Fry, who's the professor of mathematics at Royal College London, wrote the book, Hello World, How to Be Human in the Age of the Machine. If you're a technologist or involved in technology, highly recommend this book. One of the chapters in there tells this story and uh, why we shouldn't trust monitoring systems or how we should tr how we should trust them. And there's a lot to learn about working with technology in, in that book. Anyway, what's this got to do with PeopleSoft? It's about monitoring. It's about trusting our monitoring systems and setting up the monitoring systems to report accurately what the status of the systems are. Uh, and, and specifically, this session is about synthetic monitoring. Well, Graham, what is synthetic monitoring? Let's first look at uh, the Oxford Languages uh, definition of, um, of synthetic. And there's two meanings to synthetic. So it's, it's an imitation of a natural product. So we, th we think of this in terms of you know, chemical synthesis, making some product like, ni like nylon that imitates something fabric wise, maybe imitates cotton, um, but it's it's to imitate a natural product. So it imitates something. It's not real. It, it's an imitation. And it's in logic, the definition is in order to report whether something is false or true or to determine its current state. So that's what synthetic is. It's, it's a false, um, it, it's an imitation of something in order to determine the state of something. Uh, we apply that in, in monitoring. This is this is what it means. And I've got a use case here I'm going to walk through in detail with some with some demonstrations as well in PeopleSoft. So um, what does a PeopleSoft stack look like? Well, even if you're not a PeopleSoft admin or an engineer, you'll be familiar with some of these terminologies. So you have a you have a web application firewall, maybe that fronts your your environment. You've got a load balancer, with a couple of web logic servers behind that. Uh, a couple of application servers underneath the WebLogic servers and a database. And of course, your responsibility as a, as a manager of PeopleSoft or as a, an administrator in PeopleSoft is to monitor the stack. It, is my WebLogic server running? It, it, is the Tuxedo server up or down? Um, it, it has the server crashed completely and has gone off the network? This is, is a component running? 
and we, we probably all have in our PeopleSoft environments stack monitoring in one form or another. Uh, whether that's scripted or you, 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 you simply have a checklist at the beginning of the day and go and visually look, uh, is this system up, up and running or not? Uh, you might have early warning systems that tell you whether something has gone down and real-time notifications, whatever you have, you're monitoring the stack. This isn't what this presentation is about. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming you've got that covered. Uh, if you haven't, uh, and you happen to be running your environments in OCI, um, then you could consider um, stack monitoring within OCI. But if you're running PeopleSoft in Azure or AWS or on-prem, um, then they, there's tools that do this stack level monitoring. So the question here on stack monitoring, is the stack running? But the fundamental question here is, well, the stack might be operational, it might be running, but is it actually delivering a service to my end user? You know, WebLogic might be up and running, the application server might be up and running, the database might be up and running, but is it actually functioning and delivering a service to the, your user or delivering a service that's, that's acceptable to your user? Uh, acceptable might be measured in terms of a response time or something like that. So stack monitoring, is it up, is it down? Am I green? Am I red? So that's what that's about. Uh, if you happen to be running PeopleSoft in OCI, you could do stack monitoring, and that's just a little snapshot. This session isn't about stack monitoring, but just to bring that to your awareness that, um, that stack monitoring is out there. And stack monitoring can help you monitor PeopleSoft, even if it's not running in OCI. And it's the only monitoring system I know of in all the clouds that is PeopleSoft aware. So just chalk that one up. Um, look into that. So uh, I started off my career in IT in support. I'd pick up the phone and answer uh, support calls from PC users who were looking for help. And um, here's a typical support call. So a user in Australia, they try to log into my PeopleSoft system and they get an error. Uh, this page isn't working. Their browser reports some error condition. So what do they do? They call the support desk. I don't know why I've put a crown on top of the support desk analyst. That maybe they're king, I don't know, but or queen. Um, but they put a call into the support desk. What is the response of the support desk analyst? Any thoughts? What would you do if you were that support analyst? The user has just phoned you up and says, I cannot log into my PeopleSoft system. What does a support analyst do? And if this were a room, you'd all be shouting out, I'm sure. Uh, please enter in the chat if you want to. Uh, ask any questions as you go along as well. I'll answer all questions at the end, and I promise I will answer all questions. I can't promise the answer will be correct, but I will answer all questions. Um, what will the support analyst do? Well, they do exactly what I would do, is to try and log into the system myself. If the end user has said, I can't log into the system, what's the support analyst gonna do? He's gonna try and log into the system. He wants to know, whether this user based in Australia it, uh, can log into the system. Now, your support analyst is in Spain, or they might be in the United Kingdom or USA. They try to log into the system. Guess what? It responds OK and it, they log in OK. All right, that's the worst thing a user wants to hear, isn't it? They're, they're telling the support analyst, I can't log into the system. And, and what does the support analyst say? Oh, it works for me. <laughs> that's the worst thing you can hear as an end user logging a support ticket. Oh, well, it, it works for me. I can log in. All right. Oh, I don't care if the support analyst can log in. I can't. So this is what a typical support call handling might look like if a user gets an error when they're trying to log into the PeopleSoft system. So what might this look like? So I'm just painting that same stack again. I've got my user there over in Australia. They're trying to make a connection to my, my web application firewall and my load balancer and, and the WebLogic servers and, and PeopleSoft, of course. And I've got my support analyst in, in Spain and they're trying to access as well. And clearly the Spain user is green. They can connect okay. Um, but the Australia user, they're on red. They, they can't connect. They're, they're getting a, an error status. So one is green, one is red. So what, mode has the support analyst gone into? They've gone into a 
monitoring mode of performing a login check. They're not checking whether WebLogic's running. They're not checking whether the application server's running. They're not, they're not checking the database. What they're doing is what the end user is trying to do. They are, they are simulating, if you like. They are, they're doing what the end user is trying to do, which is to log into PeopleSoft, but they're getting an okay. Well, that's interesting. They're performing a login check and they're getting okay. So let's explore this in a bit more detail. A, a real live synthetic monitoring use case. Here's a PeopleSoft login page. And here's what the support analyst is doing. The first thing they're doing is opening up that login page. Even if they get the login page, that tells them something, right? It tells them that the WebLogic server is responding and, and it's delivering that login page to them. And their part of the network is working. It tells them two things. Um, so first thing they do is they, they load the login page and they check has the login page loaded now visually a human can look at this and say yep that looks fine of course what i'm look what am i looking for i'm looking for a user id a password a sign in button but actually i can also look at the title of the page and if it says oracle peoplesoft sign in which is the default uh, then i know the page is loaded okay but i could equally look at other things like is there a sign in button um, or are there any errors on this page is there a user id field for me to fill in all those things are visual cues that the the page has actually loaded successfully. So step check two has passed. Um, step three is I now enter my credentials and I push the sign in button. I log in to PeopleSoft. And then what happens? Well, what happens is hopefully this loads. And my, my browser then takes me to the landing page in PeopleSoft that me as a support analyst sees. And I'm now checking, have I logged in okay? Now, there's all sorts of things I could look at here about about have I logged in okay, but fundamentally, did I get the landing page? This user can't log into PeopleSoft. So the, uh, have I logged into PeopleSoft by looking at this page? Yes, I have. Human eye looks at this, they can see I clearly have. But I, again, again, equally, I can look at the page title, which in PeopleSoft, the default is home page. And if that title says home page, then that's a, a visual cue to me as a support analyst that I've successfully logged into PeopleSoft. Uh, the next thing I do, of course, I, I log out because I'm not going to leave myself logged in. I'm, you know, I'm a good boy. I, I, I make sure I log out. That closes down my WebLogic state session. So that's the use case. I'm going to log in. I'm going to um, test that I've arrived at the login page, test that I've actually logged in, and then and then log out. How do I do that synthetically? Now I'm doing that as a human being on the end of a line talking to my frustrated user that they can't log in. But what if I had a process that ran every minute just performing that check? I, I wouldn't need a human being to do it. I'd only need a human being involved. If that check failed for some reason, then I'd have to go and investigate. And if I'm checking it every minute, chances are I'm going to discover that failure before the end user has a chance to call it in and say, I've got a fault. And I might, that might give me enough time to rectify the fault, whatever that happens to be, uh, before the end users you know, got, got round to calling in the support desk. So how do we automate that? How do we automate that process? How do we synthetically um, simulate what the support analyst has just done? And there's a number of tools we could use. I'm just gonna pick on two, one in particular. We could use Selenium. Selenium is a, um, a, a, a uh, a, a browser-based testing tool, but we could use Selenium to, to synthesize the login process and, and test that. We could also use Postman. Now, the reason I'm picking on those two is these two tools just happen to be supported by OCI in their synthetic uh, monitoring framework in, in OCI. But I could equally have picked on other tools like Python or uh, as Phantom JS, which is not supported anymore by the open source community that did that because Selenium came along with a with a headless browser in um, in uh, in Chrome and Edge, and that kind of made that open source community die a bit of a death. But um, Selenium and Postman, they are tools we can use to script that and synthesize that transaction. So what is this? What does this tool look like? Well, I'm going to show you some example, uh, this example in real life, but this is the development tool, the, the Selenium IDE, the interactive development environment, in which I can create a script. 
And now, uh, look, I'm, I'm showing my password here. Please, honestly, my, my G Smith user ID password is not normally Graham, right? I've just changed it for the purposes of this, this exercise. I promise you my password is not normally my first name. Um, uh, so what this IDE allows me to do is record a set of instructions that I'm going to then play back to the browser. Now, if you're familiar with PeopleTools test framework, it's very, very similar to that. In fact, the PeopleTools test framework uses the Chrome driver behind the scenes that Selenium is going to end up using to uh, play back this transaction um, in, in my test frame. So this is the Selenium IDE. I've constructed uh, a script. I'm just highlighting parts of the script that map onto that that real life user case. So there's the command to load the login page. It's open that particular page. There's the test. Have I re have I arrived at the login page? So there's the assert the title. So check if the title matches that string Oracle PeopleSoft sign in. If it does, we're OK. If it doesn't, we didn't get the sign in page. You could conclude. Uh, then I enter my credentials, my user ID, my password, and then I send keys uh, and hit enter basically to on that password. Um, sorry, on that sign on uh, button. And then fourth step is I assert the title again of the page, does the home page match? So you can see we've, con and then, I'll, then I'll log out. We've constructed a very, very simple set of um, playback uh, commands for um, testing this uh, this process, this login process. So let's actually go and do this for real. So let me uh, load up my uh, edge here. So here's my here's my PeopleSoft system. I'm just gonna prove to you that this, this is real. I'm actually gonna sign in as, as my G Smith user here. And I'll get a response, and uh, I'm just going to sign out now. So that was me. That was me doing that uh, for, for real as a human being. Let me do this uh, using Selenium. So I've got the Selenium IDE plugin here on my browser. I'm just going to open that up, and I've got a script I've already prepared. So I'm going to open an existing project. That existing project is just a JSON file, and if we look at this JSON file, it it you could edit this manually if you wanted to, but I'm not going to. I'm just explaining that it, it is JSON um, because you might want to edit, edit it manually, but the IDE has created that for me. So if I go and open this um, this .side file, Selenium IDE file, then here it is loading that little project into my Selenium IDE frame, and it's got nine steps in it. And if I push the run current test button, um, it opens up a browser, puts gsmith2 user ID, puts the password in, hits the login button, and then logs out. And all of that has passed successfully. Let me go and change something here. I'm going to assert that the title is not homepage, but homepage um, ABC. Um, Clearly, that will do a test of whether that matches the home page in PeopleSoft and, and it will fail. So let's play this back again. There it is, logging into PeopleSoft. It does the assertion and it fails. And you can see up here the title of the um, landing page is home page. That does not match what I was expecting it to match, and therefore I get a failure. If I had failed to log in, I could. Yeah, and I and I didn't get the home page up here. I believe that's that's I could reach the conclusion that my login has failed in some way. Now why it's failed, I don't know, but I'm just saying it's failed if that home page doesn't match. So that that's um that's the synthetic nature of what we're doing here is we're simulating that login using Selenium IDE. Uh, this a PowerPoint contains some videos of that, so just in case my um, live demo didn't work. So I'm just going to skip over those. And if you get hold of this deck later, then you will have these videos in there for, for reference. So that's that's synthetic monitoring. If you were to set that up in a PowerShell script or a Linux Bash shell script on a server somewhere, you could have the PSIDE script run every five minutes and then get a response from that and email somebody if you know, to say that there was a problem with it. You could do all of that if you wanted to, or or you could use OCI. An Oracle Cloud Infrastructure um, 
has a synthetic monitoring solution in it, which I think is, is absolutely terrific and, and, and really nice. So it's part of the observability and management um, uh, kind of framework of, of OCI in which there's a whole ton of system and application and database monitoring technology available to you. Part of the application performance monitoring, APM suite, is synthetic monitoring. And I mentioned stack monitoring earlier as well, and you can see it down here in the OCI menu, stack monitoring is part of that as well. Synthetic monitoring is also part of that. And there are all sorts of dashboards you can build that, that allow you to combine stack and synthetic monitoring into a, a holistic view of your application, not just to monitor whether the web server's up or down, but whether your service is actually being delivered to your users in a way that is acceptable. Um, do you have to be running PeopleSoft in OCI to use this? No, you don't. There's bridge technology that allows OCI with its PeopleSoft aware monitoring to hook into just about any platform you, you might have. So if you are running PeopleSoft on Azure or AWS or you're still on-prem, then you can still use synthetic and stack monitoring to inspect your PeopleSoft system and report and alert on it. So that's just contextualizing what we're seeing here. So how do you set this up in OCI? So step one is you create an APM domain. So application performance monitoring domain is required um, for your synthetic monitoring to be hosted inside. Once you've created that, then you upload your script. And you can upload a .side script, which is Selenium, or you can up load a JavaScript script that's been generated by Postman. And that's why I mentioned Postman and Selenium is they are both supported scripts uh, by OCI in, in Selenium, in, sorry, in, in synthetic monitoring. So step two, you upload that script and literally you take that JSON file that I showed you earlier and you just drag and drop it straight into the console. You don't have to do anything else to it. The next step is you define your synthetic monitor. Now, this is the this is the the monitor is the thing that will execute the script at a certain interval with n retries uh, and a whole lot of other characteristics. You know, what do I do if it fails? And, and uh, am, am I going to insist on on SSL connections? Uh, am I going to measure network latency and met network components? Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. I'm not going to go into all the details of that. That's not what this session is about. But OCI's synthetic monitoring has a, a lot of parameters that you can you can specify in defining this, and um, I'm just going to cover a few of them. So um, now what we can do is um, part of that definition of the synthetic monitor. Back to our diagram here, is you can specify where the test gets run from. Now, if I run the test in the same data center as my PeopleSoft system, if the data center blows up, so does my monitoring. So as a point of principle around monitoring, make sure you're not monitoring from inside the same environment that the system exists in. Um, I mean, that's fine if you just if web logic goes down or or your load balancer goes down, but what if the entire network goes down? So in this example that we described earlier, where, where my user was in Australia and my support analyst was in Spain, I can actually set up the OCI synthetic monitor to run from multiple vantage points. I can have it run from Australia, actually inside the OCI network in Australia region. Um, if my network connectivity between Australia and my PeopleSoft system went down, then my synthetic monitor would pick it up. Um, if the connection between Spain or the UK were active, then my synthetic monitor would report that as a green status and, and, and then I'd know I've got a connectivity problem, not a PeopleSoft problem or a WAF or load balancer problem. So this is all down to early warning that there's a potential problem um, and you've got to be able to trust these sources. If you were just to trust the UK, uh, Spain support analyst saying, oh, no, I, I can log into PeopleSoft, there clearly isn't a problem, then you've missed, you've missed the real issue here, which is there is a problem for the Australia user. So make sure your vantage points are good. Make sure you've climbed to the top of that building with your large binoculars and you're looking in the right direction for those inbound missiles, to use the uh, rather real world analogy of Stanislav Petrov. Um, so vantage points is a key element of the definition of the 
um, uh, of the OCI synthetic monitoring. And, and just another word on, on vantage points. There are vantage points available in OCI for all of um, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure's regions, but you can also provision your own. So if you've if you've got your own data center, you you can with, with, which is closed to the outside world and there's no public access to your PeopleSoft system. You can't use the public vantage points. You can provision automatically provision your own private vantage points inside your network. Um, and have those feed uh, and execute these scripts and feed the results to your um, synthetic monitoring uh, dashboard. And here's a screenshot of the dashboard. We're going to look at this in real life in a live demo in a moment, but he here's a review of the synthetic monitoring logs. So on, up here on the left side here, we can see uh, something called the monitor availability. So this is running every 10 minutes. Uh, so I get a I get a bullet I get a point on the graph for every time that executes, and if my system my script executes successfully, if I don't get any errors, then I, it returns a one. If there's an error, it returns a zero. So as long as I've got no zeros on this graph, I, I'm okay. And uh, there's other things that this monitors. So how long did it take to execute that script? As you can see here, my execution times fluctuate between sort of five seconds and six seconds. So they're about half a second difference between the login, you know, open up login page, log in, assert am I on the home page, and then log out. That whole thing takes about five and a half, six seconds. What if this suddenly took 20 seconds? Even if it did an error, what if it took 20 seconds? This would show me. The graph would plot that. It would say it took longer between these hours or at this particular point in time, or maybe it perpetually is now running at you know, 20 seconds, whatever. Um, so we've got time to time to execute the script. And then we've got other things like the total number of requests that were, were executed. So if, it, and how long they took. So each one of these colored lines down here is one part of my Selenium script. And if, and if one part of it was really quick, but another part of it was really, really slow, I'd see that here as well. And any of these metrics, I can create alerts for, I can set thresholds, and I can generate alerts of different categories. I can create warnings if this goes above seven seconds, and I can create a red alert if it goes above 10 seconds, and I have those alerts then message the dashboard um, using real-time real, real -time notifications, SMS messaging, emails, webhooks into your Slack channel or whatever um, you're using to, to do monitoring. Um, so yeah, this is just some of the metrics that are available with synthetic monitoring. Um, here's a, a real example of the monitor availability showing a consistently available PeopleSoft system. And then suddenly at, at like around sort of 8.30 in the morning, it drops to zero, meaning the system's not available. Something's happened. And my test, my login test is failing. And that we would generate a critical alert to the support desk. They would be immediately into stack monitoring. Well, they'd look at the synthetic monitor output first, uh, trying to evaluate what, what's gone wrong. What, why is this suddenly stopped responding? Um, that, so that shows a complete system outage there. Um, here's the details of each log entry. You can see the total completion time for each of my executions of the script is you know, around five seconds, five and a half seconds. Um, and uh, when you drill into one of those, it actually shows you the synthetic monitoring fr framework actually captures screenshots at every point. So there's a screenshot showing the, the login page. There's the screenshot showing me actually logged into PeopleSoft and, and about to hit the sign out button. And there's, there's the logout page. So a support analyst getting an alert would come straight into here and see what happened. Did I not get the sign in page? Did I not get the login, the, the home page? Uh, did the logout fail for some reason? Because it might have done. Uh, you'll be able to visually see straight away. And then from there, you'd go into stack monitoring and you'd be looking at, well, what was it? Was it WebLogic? Was it App Server? So on and so forth. So these are just static screenshots. We're going to look at this in a real demo. Oh, right now. So let me switch into uh, my other browser here. And I just need to sign back into to OCI.
and I'm going to go into my synthetic monitoring pane here and choose my APM domain. I said we needed to create that and I've got a number of tests here. Not all of them are active. I've just only got one enabled at the moment and the one that's enabled is my login monitor. So if I click if I click this, this is the, the, the login monitor use case that we've been talking about. If I click edit and then uh, see the script that's running, it's running a script called GSHRO 43B test project script. And I can go into um, syn synthetic monitoring, if I just cancel out of this, I can go into the synthetic monitoring uh, admin page and look at the scripts that I've got. Here's my test project script. If I open that up, uh, here's the script. I can have multiple versions of these if I need to and drill into this. It will, uh, sorry, that's not the script, forgive me. That's the actual monitor that's used in the script. Um, I, I can view the script, there it is there. So there's, there's the JSON generated by the Selenium IDE completely untouched. I haven't had to change that at all. And that's what's being executed against my PeopleSoft system. So let's go back to the synthetic monitor. We'll just drill into this. Now this is this has been running for most of the day today. And if I look at the last six hours, uh, we'll see here that I, I've actually got, I've actually, from this point here to this point here, I've only had one vantage point set up. And then around four o'clock in the afternoon, I decided to set up a new vantage point of Australia. And you can see here, it's now plotting me two plots on the graph. What One is orange, and there's another one, it's hard to see, but it's down here. I don't know if you can see those points at the bottom of the graph, they're showing zero, and that's coming from Australia. In fact, the easiest way to see this is to drop into the um, uh, uh, table view of this analytic. And we can see here that when I run the script from Spain, I'm getting back a one. But when I run from Australia East region, I'm getting back a zero. And I'm just, what I'm doing is real life simulating a network failure there. I've actually closed Australia East access to my endpoint on the firewall to simulate what a network failure might look like. So I can visually see that on the graph and I can, I can go and generate alerts based on that. So I can, I can create an alarm on this query or use the OCI notification framework to, to feed that back as well. So let's go and look at some of the history here. And you see straight away in the history log that this is um, looking at all vantage points. So there's my Australia East vantage point. It's unavailable. It's showing me it's actually failed. And if I go, uh, into well there are no screenshots to view and the reason why the screenshot there's nothing to view is because it's the error categories is timed out so it couldn't even reach the endpoint url there was a network failure so it couldn't capture anything if i go and drill into the spain one the last one that was successful i go and view the screenshots from this then there's there's the screenshot hitting the login page there's the screenshot arriving on the home page and, and me about to sign out. And then there's the result of the sign out, which is the result of the sign out in this example is a, a sign in page, but you might have single sign on enabled. And if, if your sign out actually took you somewhere else, it redirected you to your you know corporate portal or something like that, then you'd see a screenshot of that. So that's that's showing us that um, that this was all um, successful and um, uh, uh, the support analyst you know, confirms there that my login script actually did work okay. That is my presentation. That is the material I wanted to cover. I wanted to show you how a real world use case that is used by a human could actually be synthetically generated by uh, a machine. Um, in this case, a script built in Selenium, and that that Selenium can be hosted anywhere, but actually is the example I've used here is hosted inside the OCI synthetic monitoring framework, has been pointed at a PeopleSoft system and can execute that script every, every 
minute, every 10 minutes, whatever, capture those points and then generate alerts from them to notify you that that synthetic monitor has failed. Now, you can imagine all sorts of possibilities for this. Here, I'm just simulating a very simple use case. Is my system working? It, can I log in? But you might want to simulate, um, is integration broker working? Is the channel open? Well, what you can do is you can you can script navigating to integration broker in, in, in peer, and then script the inspection of the status, and then report that in, in a Selenium uh, assertion, and then embed that into your synthetic monitoring framework and you can have it not only check can you log into PeopleSoft but is the integration broker working so it's just another way of, of checking this you know if you're if you're a PeopleSoft user and somebody says oh my process isn't running where do you go you go to process monitor you you navigate to process monitor you go to the status page and you look at the status of the process monitor and is it running in fact, not is, is it running, but was it updated in the last few minutes? If it, if it was if it wasn't the last few minutes, then the status is wrong because it hasn't been updated because the process schedule has gone offline. So you could you could assert all of that very simply in a Selenium script, and then have OCI execute that every two or three minutes and, and report back to you that the process monitor's got a problem. Could even have it inspect how many queued processes you've got. What what if you end up with more than 10 queued processes Ooh, that's a that's a warning that something's gone wrong with performance of the system or you've got some long-running processes you need to deal with you could have synthetic monitoring watch that for you so anything that you could script in selenium or postman you could assert then you could embed into synthetic monitoring uh, in oci or other frameworks indeed um anyway thank you for your time and in, in listening to this uh, it's my great pleasure to be part of the Pathlock Innovation Series. I have some pretty cool tech around monitoring PeopleSoft as well in their um, their, their security products. Um, highly recommend. I've got a lot of respect for their engineering team. Um, but I'm Graham Smith. I've been part of this innovation series at Pathlock. Thank you for listening. Uh, are there any questions? Thank you, Graham, for your presentation. Again, if you do have any questions, we encourage you to add them now to the questions box you'll find on your control panel. Um, while we're waiting for any of those to come in, I just wanted to say that we have a couple more sessions coming up today. I just put a link in the chat to our full agenda. If you'd like to go look at those, we encourage you to register and attend those sessions. I'm not seeing any questions right now, but if you do have any questions, you can reach out to us at info at pathlock.com or you can reach out to Graham at graham.smith at version1.com. Um, and with that, I just wanted to say thank you and we hope to see you next time.